Um, so without further ado, um, let's dive into a demo and see if the demo gaps are uh, on our side today. This is the risky part, right? Um, so this is Google Tag Manager server side. Um, I'm not sure how many people have, have seen this before. Uh, hopefully a few of you have at least seen Google Tag Manager before, and it should probably look very familiar. Um, so the big difference really is this thing here called clients. Um, but first, before we dive into the clients, we need to set up our templates. So templates are just like they are in Google, normal Google Tag Manager. Um, they are um, sort of sandbox JavaScript templates. So it's still running um, JS under the hood here, but it's running on Node.js under the hood. Um, and you build out these, these templates and they have the logic in that you're, you're ultimately going to, to leverage to do what we've just described. So I've already imported the Snowplow client here. Um, this is a bit of a caveat at the moment. Um, so the gallery for clients is currently not available. Um, there was a day where it was available. I think Google launched it too early by accident, and that was a great day. Um, but um, Google giveth and, and Google taketh away. So um, that, is, that is currently gone for now, but it, one would hope that it's not too far away. Um, and we have submitted that into the gallery. So hopefully when the gallery is available, um, it will be there. Um, but to import it, basically, you just click New. And um, you go here, Import. Um, and then you, you find your template um, and then you import it. And I'll show you where you can get that template from in a moment when we do one of the tags. Um, so I've already imported the client and then you come in to the clients tab now and we can set up the client. Um, so here's a client I set up a little bit earlier just to make our lives a little bit quicker today. Um, but normally you've got new, click like that, click the Snowball client. And the defaults pretty much work out of the box. Um, so this hasn't been touched, this is still all the defaults. Um, a few things you can do here. So if you wanted to um, set this up as a bit of a proxy in front of your Snowplow pipeline, um, a lot of people want to remove things like the IP address um, so they don't store it. And um, you could do that here and just rip it out immediately before it gets there's any further processing. And um, a lot of tags also allow you to remove the IP address. So maybe you want the IP address to go to your Snowplow pipeline, but maybe you don't want it to go to Amplitude, for instance. Um, so some of the tags will allow you to remove it at the tag level too. Um, if you wanted to forward your Snowplow tracking to Google Analytics um, v4, and this tick box helps, it populates some um, properties that the GAV4 tag um, wants you to populate. Um, so I'll leave that ticked for now because we'll show that later. Um, one other thing that I haven't really talked about yet is also that the client can also serve the Snowplow tracker. Um, so if you want to serve sp.js, and because this container will be running on a first party domain, um, you'll want to make sure you give it your it's own domain name and um, then you end up being able to load your tracker as well um, from from this same th um, first party domain and you can rename it and call it whatever you want so uh, maybe you can dodge the odd add a blocker or two um, and then down here you've got the other common properties that you might expect to see on a collector and um, so custom post paths again to allow you to get around ad blockers um, a lot of ad blockers will block this url so you may want to change it to something for your website um, for instance, and the other path will always work, the, the default path, um, but you could you could change it to whatever you wanted to change that to. And then um, it also accepts GET requests and POST requests. Um, GET requests, however, are on like slash I, which is quite a small URL, so some people may choose to disable that. And if you're going to forward the events um, from the Snowplow client into the Snowplow tag, um, leaving this include original TP2 event on, um, means that the tag just immediately forwards the, the Snowplow event. It doesn't do any reprocessing. So it's exactly the same event that the, the tracker created. Um, so this just speeds things up a little bit inside the container. Um, and if you really want, um, you can tick these two boxes. Um, I won't go into those today. We do include the self-describing event, but it has some processing done to it um, to make it the same as what an enriched event would look like. And um, if you want to include the original one, you can, you can tick these options and that will um, do that. So we'll save that. Um, and then we've got our, our client set up. So now we're going to want a, our first tag. Um, so we'll do a classic setup. We'll forward it to Snowplow, first of all. Um, so we can search the gallery. And here's um, some of the things that are available in the gallery. Um, there is a Snowplow tag. It's already in there. So we'll add the Snowplow tag. It's got some permissions that it needs, like around cookies and being able to send requests. And then that's in there. Then we come in here, new, and create a tag. And this should hopefully be pretty familiar to anyone that's ever set up a GTM, uh, normal GTM um, tags. And I'm going to forward all events into um, my Snowplow tag. 
And now I need to collect a URL, which hopefully I've got here. Um, so I'm going to forward it into this collector. Um, we can overwrite the cookie settings as well if you we wanted to. I don't need to change any of these. Um, and again, because it's just snowplow to snowplow, these are additional settings. If you were doing like GAV4 client into snowplow, which is possible, um, you may want to play with some of these advanced settings. Um, so these are basically here if you're using a non snowplow um, client and you want to reload those events. This, this tag is actually pretty good for uh, um, if you've already instrumented GAV4 tracking on your website and you want that into into your Snowplow pipeline, into your warehouse, and you want to convert all of those events into self-describing schema events and validate them all, um, you could you can do that here um, inside this tag. It'll automatically work for Google Analytics v4, and it also automatically works for many of the common events that the Google Tag Manager documentation defines. Um, it'll automatically convert those into a set of new schemas that we've published, um, but you, we can talk more about that later if we, if we have time. And um, so we're all good there. I'll save it. Um, it gives it a handy default name. And we're all good. Um, so that's our default setup. And we will we can go into preview mode. Hopefully this works today. Um, so we're in preview mode. Um, and I've already implemented tracking on the Snowpod docs site. Um, so if I just refresh this site, um, I've implemented the tracking to go into the, the tag manager. And there you can see my page view. It only shows my page views because it's stored in a cookie. You can see that that has fired an event and it's posted an event to uh, that collector that I described earlier. And um, if we then go to BigQuery where that's going to land, um, I've set up a query that one would hope works. Um, and we'll just run this and see if it's landed in BigQuery yet. Amazing. So it's 26 minutes past um, five in, in UTC and docs two. I hit the home page. That's my domain user ID if anyone wants it. Um, it looks like it's been anonymized. It's probably not much use to you. And then that is my page view ID. Just a nice simple query, make sure that that's landed in, in that pipeline. Cool. So our core setup is done. We're doing snowplow to snowplow, and that's all working. Um, what else do we want to do? Well, there's a few more templates we could install. And um, so let's look at one of the snowplow authored ones. Um, so unfortunately, they haven't quite made it into the gallery in time for this talk. Um, there's no other spy snowplow ones in here yet. We have submitted a couple. Um, but one of those that we've submitted is for amplitude. And um, so here's the documentation for that. And until um, it's available, you can do this manual installation. And so all you've got to do is right click, save as, um, call it template.tpl, try and remember what I called it. Um, and then we can go back into Google Tag Manager and we can just create a new template. And then we can click up the three dots in the top right corner, click import, and then we can import this template. And that's done. Now, there is a downside to this. If I do, if you just republish updates, um, you won't get them automatically because you've done a manual import. Once it's in the gallery, you, it will automatically update itself should we fix any bugs or add any new features, for instance. And so that's just one thing to bear in mind. And we save that and we come out and now we've got this amplitude. Hey, can, can you post a link to that um, that document in the Snowplow docs in the chat? Yep, will do. Thank you so much. Uh, it's only launched today. So if you find any typos, please let me know. Let me zoom out of the way. So we've got um, we've got our amplitude um, tag now set up. So you can come in here, pick amplitude, and then you can all get to steal my API key now. Um, I hope you're all going to behave yourselves. This will work for the rest of this talk. So right, there you go. I'll grab my amplitude API key, and I will oh, that's a preview tag. And then I will set this up. So I'll stick my amplitude API key in there. And then there's a load of um, options in here. So by default, um, it will just work. It will map a self-describing event. It will map a page view. It will map all of the common events that you would track. It will map all of your context information into the amplitude event. And um, so it becomes quite a rich, um, a rich amplitude event uh, just, just by default um, without you really doing anything. Um, if you don't want it to track self-describing events, if you want it to just track a selection of entities, you can add them here. And um, if you want some entities, if you're familiar with amplitude, um, it has event properties and user properties. So if you want some entities to go into event properties and some entities to go into user properties, you can specify them here. If you want anything you've not mapped to still be included, you can tick this thing here. Um, so it's like really configurable. Um, all of this is documented in that link I've just placed. Um, well, in the, there's a page underneath that page where all of these configuration options are, are described. And there's also like inline help as well um, inside the template too. Um, again, we didn't just want this to work for Snowplow. Um, 
I wanted it to work for any client. Um, so it works best with Snowplow, as you might imagine, um, but it also works with any other client, um, which is where this additional event mapping options really comes into play. Um, so by default, it'll include all of the common event properties. Um, now, if we want to know what common event properties are, um, they are, if I can find it on this page, um, in Google Docs. These are the common event properties. So things like client ID, event name, if you, the IP address is going to be forwarded, the page location, all the things I mentioned. And there's a user data thing. And um, if you track, there's a schema now on Igloo Central um, called user data. If you track that, it will populate this inside Google Tag Manager. Um, so there's things like that that we've done too. Um, but if you're using another client and you want to pull a property off the, the event that maybe the GAV4 client um, is doing, you can, you can add a row and, and do that as well in here. Um, so pretty flexible. Um, and then again, things like if you want to remove the IP address to Amplitude, you can, you can do that here as well. Um, I haven't added a trigger. That's quite important. And um, so I'll just on my, uh, I don't know, just my page views as an example um, for that. And we'll save that. And then we'll do a quick preview. And then we'll go back to the docs website and we'll refresh. Um, and hopefully that will send an event into here. And there we go. And now we can see it's also sent an event to Amplitude. Um, so what's actually being sent to these two tags? Um, let's have a quick look at that common event um, data before we move on. Um, so here it is. Um, so as you can see straight away, these are all the things um, that you would expect to see uh, from that common from that, that piece set of documentation. Um, you can see that they're all the same properties here and that you'd expect to see. These are those special ones that Google Analytics wants you to, to have if you were going to do GA before um, routing. But then, and there's a bug in the UI here, so you have to do that. Um, you can also see there's all of these common, these X-SP ones. So this is all the richer Snowplow data that's not part of the, the core, um, but for instance, like, a cookie is enabled in the browser. You've got your context. So there's the web page context and your web page ID. Um, you've got the performance timing that maybe you're familiar with from the JavaScript tracker. Um, we've got the like the timestamps that things were sent from the device. We've got session information. Um, and then we've got that original TP2 event, which I left hand on. So we can just forward it, a uh, version of the tracker that the, the docs website is using. And the platform is being sent from, all that sort of stuff. Um, and all of that can be used and is used um, when you're forwarding events to these different platforms using the Snowplow authored tags. Um, and similarly, in the, if there's any other tags, um, like the, the, the vendor or community ones, you can leverage these two. And we'll do that um, in a minute as well. So we get in there. Um, we'll do one more tag. And this one's built in. And um, so Google have the benefit of including their own tags um, by default. I don't have to import them as templates. Um, so here is GAV4. And here is GAV4. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go um, to our setup assistant. Um, we'll go and get our... Um, measurement ID from here and we'll go back here we'll stick it in there and we'll just leave it as default we won't do anything special with that at all and we'll send um, send all events to JV4 why not you can have them all um, so now we've got JV4 set up we'll just do a one quick preview and then I'm going to get some audience participation on the go um, and we'll see how this goes this will be a, this will either be wonderful or terrible um, so we've got that and we've got our page view, um, and then now we can see it's also sending events to GAV4. So we've got a setup now. We've got our client set up. We've got three tags. We're relaying to Snowplow, Amplitude, and GAV4. Um, so now we're going to submit this, um, and we're going to publish uh, added various destinations. And we're going to publish that. I'm not going to sing. I apologize. I'm not, probably not something I should apologize for. And then. Um, We'll go back to our workspace. Once it's loaded. OK, so that's now published. So your job as audience participation um, is to navigate to docs.snowplanalytics.com or I'll click the link I put in the chat earlier and, and then navigate around the docs site for me, please. Um, we'll have a little we'll have a little play and see what happens. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll join you. Let's have a little look at try Snowplow first. Um, our, our little trial of Snowplow, if, you, if you're interested. Yeah, so. A little bit of, I'll do a bit of selling. Eh? It's, a, it's a product called Snowplow BDP. And if you, if you want, you can also set up Snowplow open source. Um, so we can navigate through a few pages. Hopefully, you're all doing this as well, giving me some data, um, some random events there. And that's a query our data in our Postgres loader. 
all right, I've done a little bit of nav navigating around the site. Um, so um, what should be happening, if all is going to plan, is this table should be slowly filling up. And we can see that it is. We can see a lot of them are me, um, but there's a lot of other people as well that are landing in. Uh, it's good to see quite a lot of you click the link that I put in uh, in, Zoom, in the Zoom chat, so that wasn't wasted effort. Um, and you've been clicking around, um, and all of these events have been landing in, in BigQuery, which is quite cool. Um, if we look at uh, here, we can see there's been a spike of traffic in the amplitude. Um, API, and I'm not going to go in and um, build any fancy graphs in Amplitude. You'll just have to believe me um, that these events are being ingested um, by Amplitude. And then um, if we wait patiently, the, I'm hoping the real-time dashboard of um, and this may start updating. There we go, it started updating already. Amazing. Um, so we've seen 12 users, and it's drawing uh, some nice graphs. So you can see that we've been forwarding um, these to, to GAV4 as well. And the real-time dashboard is starting to highlight and quite a lot of you dotted around the UK, but we've got some people in, in the US, um, someone in Bratislava, someone in Berlin, someone um, hopefully keeping nice and warm up in the northern part of Sweden. Um, so we've got a variety of people um, right now, which is quite cool. So um, that is, they're all like snowplow or or vendor author tags. Um, just for a bit of fun, I thought we'd wrap up with um, one more, just a community tag, just to really show off the sorts of things that are coming um, with, with Google Tag Manager server side. Um, and someone down here I spotted has, has built like a Slack integration. And I know what you all desperately want in your lives. That is all of your Snowplow events landing in a Slack channel. Can't think of anything better. Um, so that's what we'll quickly just try now. Um, so we can set this up. Um, and I've set up a webhook earlier uh, for this. So there you go, you can send me all the Slack notification if you can uh, copy that fast enough. And then um, we'll do new page view. And then what we're going to extract. So this is where um, the we can start extracting things from this common event. Um, so we'll, we'll take the page location. Um, for instance, and then we'll call that page location. And then we can take things like, uh, what should we take? Client ID, because that's going to be like a user ID field, device ID, I guess, um, device ID field. And then we can also start thinking about um, taking um, things like the, from the context of the event. So I'm going to try and get the web page ID out of here. Um, so it's x dash sp, um, and then it's contexts. And then I'm hoping I can type, I can't, so it's com. So it's the name of your vendor, just like it normally would be um, on a JSON schema. But with underscores instead of full stops, um, it is then the name of the the context. Um, so it's web page, and then it's just the major version of the of the schema. So any any they've all collapsed down into just their major version and, and combined into this array. We know that they're an array as well because all contexts on Snowplow events are arrays. Um, but we know there's only ever going to be one web page, right? So we can pick off the first element of the array with just dot zero on there. If you wanted like always the second one, you could do that or something if you wanted to. Um, and then you can do the ID, which will go and get the ID field off the, the first property. And that will be my page view ID, hopefully. Um, that's what we're going to do for now. We're going to save that. Um, and we're going to add a trigger, aren't we? Um, and I'm going to do it on page views. And we're going to I don't know, make it good, because that sounds fun. Um, Slack ping. And then we're going to publish this Show preview it first. Let's, let's be our ourselves. Let's go in here. Let's refresh that. And I'll just wait a second for that event to arrive, hopefully. There it is. Slack ping succeeded. I mean, that looks good. Um, and then I have, hopefully, you don't see all my personal messages now. This is dangerous, isn't it? Hey. Um, so here's my Slack channel. Um, I waved just that was what I did just before we started at one minute to five. And that's me testing earlier. And we can see that my new page view has arrived. So if I now publish this, but one last test, um, add Slack. So maybe there's an event that fires and it happens on the server side of your uh, your application. Maybe when someone makes a purchase or something, um, or maybe when someone makes a purchase over a certain amount, you can make your triggers really quite customizable. Um, you can pick up 
pick any field really off of the off the property. We've also started spiking out a a really like snowplow specific um, variable that you could use with a with a trigger, and um, to really like start digging in and, and making it easier for you to like look inside context or look inside self-describing events um, if you were using the Snowplow client and to help you build more complex um, triggers for, for Snowplow. So if you all want to navigate and play around the docs, now here you can see there's some people on the docs um, and navigating um, around and we're getting we're getting notifications in so Slack, which is, which is maybe cool. I don't know if that's cool or not, um, but there you go. You can see that it's uh, relaying events to Slack just to show you some of the power of, of maybe what you can do here. So that's pretty much what I wanted to demonstrate today. Um, you can see that people are still appearing in, in GA. I'm, I'm sure events are still coming into Amplitude um, and they'll still be landing in my big query database as well. Um, so they're all relaying um, around the place now. Um, so there's that one other uh, piece of setup that we've got, and that is um, relaying it um, from an relaying an enriched event um, into the, the pipeline. So I'm not going to demonstrate this today just because it, I don't have concept left in five minutes. Um, but just to give you sort of a flavor, really, um, if I just refresh this, what you'll see, really the core difference between a, a TP2 and the first thing it will say enriched up here. And then if we look at the event data, um, Really, the big difference is that where you see these contexts, um, what the snowplow enrichment does really, it adds a lot more context to an event. So you'll see things like the yet another user agent analyzer context, for instance. So you'll have all the user, um, you'll have all the user agent passing here. So you'll be able to really dig into things like that. Maybe you've got the campaign enrichment turned on, and, and you're you're going to get all the campaign things and then all of the other things that it might do. So if you've got ge the geolocation enrichment turned on where you're looking up the geolocation based on IP address, um, all of that geolocation stuff will be here. And these, these names, um, you should be pretty familiar if you're familiar with Snowplow, they, they, they match no matter whether it's coming from a tracker or whether it's coming from the enriched side of the pipeline, they'll match what the, you would see in an, in an atomic event. Um, so if we look at this, like this table, all of these fields, they would all be available on the enriched event. Okay, so a much richer set of data. Um, and then again, all of these, these contexts may, may be available as well, things like the, the UA parser, um, if you were doing like, I mean, mobile, I'd be on directly from the mobile tracker, geolocation, all those sorts of things might be, will become available um, on there. So that's pretty much it. <laughs>